I want to tell you something about radioactivity that fascinates me. Ready? Take a single atom of some radioactive sample. Let's say radium, radium 226. The question I want to know is, can we predict when this atom will decay? The answer is no. Physics tells us that it's impossible to predict exactly when this atom will decay. It might decay the very next second or it may not decay for the next billion years. There is no way for us to tell. It's not that we don't know, we do know the physics and the laws of physics actually tells us that it's impossible to predict, which means a single atom of radio, you know, single radioactive atom is hopelessly unpredictable. You cannot tell when it will decay. Now, what if we have a collection of these atoms? What if we have an entire radioactive sample which contains billions of such atoms? Well, I would think that even this sample would be even more unpredictable because individual atoms that make it up is so highly unpredictable. So for this sample also, I may not be able to predict when it will decay, but guess what? And here's the mind blowing part. The sample, if you take a sample of radioactive substance, it is perfectly predictable and you can tell exactly when it will decay. For example, for radium 226, 50% of this sample will decay in s about 1600 years. We know that. If you wait twice that time, about 75% of that sample will decay. You ask me any percentage of, uh, you know, how much time it will take for any percentage of the sample to decay and I can give you an answer for that. And this is the mind blowing part. How is it <laughs> that if you take any single atom, it is unpredictable, you can't tell when it will decay, but if you consider a collection of these unpredictable atoms, somehow they are perfectly predictable. How does that make any sense? That's the mind blowing part for me. So how does it work out that way? Well, because radioactivity follows a specific rule, now we can write what that rule is mathematically, we can draw graphs and try to understand it that way, or we can use an analogy. The good thing about this analogy is it's super intuitive and gives you some insights around probability, statistics, and large numbers. But of course, the downside of an analogy, like with any analogy, is that it's not perfect, all right? So let's go the analogy route. Now imagine I am that single radioactive atom. The rule that I follow for DK is very simple. I'll take a coin, I need a coin. Okay, the rule that I'll follow is, I'll toss this coin. If I get heads, I'll decay. If I get tails, I won't decay. And if I'm radium, I will toss this coin every 1600 years. That's the rule. The first time I toss this coin, when you are seeing me tossing this coin, if when the coin is in the air, I ask you, do you think I'll decay or not? What's your answer going to be? Well, your answer is going to be, it's a 50-50, right? There's a 50% chance of I'll decay or not, which means you have no idea. It's equally likely for me to either decay or not decay. Let's imagine I get a tails and I won't decay. After 1600 years, I'll toss again. Now I ask you, what are the chances of me decaying now? It's still 50-50, right? It means even right now, the chances are the same. <laughs> you have no idea whether I'll decay or not. I do this 100 times and let's say all these 100 times I got a tails, which means I did not decay. I know it's highly un improbable, but it's possible. So let's say that happened, okay? So I have a life for thousands of years now. I haven't decayed for thousands of years. I'm super frustrated. I really want to decay. I'm gonna toss the 101st time. What are the chances of me decaying now after being alive for such a long time? It's still 50, 50%. So you see, even though I'm obeying the rule, the rule that I'm obeying does not allow you to predict exactly when I'll decay. I might decay the very first time I toss this coin or I might not decay for the next 100 tosses. You have no idea of telling. However, now imagine instead of one person, one radioactive atom, you have billions of us. All of us are gonna play the same game. We're gonna toss coins every 1600 years. And let's say we toss coins together just for the sake of simplicity, convenience. What's gonna happen now when the first time we toss the coin, all of us together, Again, individually, you don't know whether we'll get a heads or not, but because there's a billion of us, you can tell that half of us will get heads, half of us will get tails. 
And therefore you can tell that after the first toss, half of us will decay and half of us will not, will stay as is. And that's why it becomes predictable. The reason it becomes predictable is because when you take billions of stuff, billions of things, and each one of them are playing this game of probability, probability or statistics becomes real the more number you take. And I, I said billions, but if you look at our radioactive sample, the number that we're talking about is not billion. We're talking about Avogadro number, like 10 to the 23, like 100,000 billion billion. So the numbers are so insanely large that probability comes to life. Statistics comes to life. And it's for that reason, a sample of radioactive atoms is highly predictable versus a single atom is not. Now, of course, I should mention the downside of the analogy. I said that we're gonna toss a coin every 1600 years, which means according to the analogy, for that 1600 years, nothing happens, and then suddenly, you know, the sample reduces to half, then again for 1600 years, nothing happens. But you know, radioactivity doesn't happen that way. It, it's a continuous process. There's continuous decay happening. So it's not perfect, but I hope it gives you some intuition behind how numbers work, how statistics work, and how when you have a large number, um, statistics becomes real. All right, see you, bye.